everybody. Happy October. Um, this is one of the best months. And aside from being one of my favorite months, it's actually always a really good month for social media. Um, and this is the Community Awareness Committee meeting of the Raleigh Historic Development Commission. Oh, <laughs> yes, that Go too. Um, yes. And one of the things we'll talk about in the meeting, but October is definitely one of the best months for social media. Um, really any time during the holidays. So October, November, and December are when we really have the opportunity to um, reach out to the community and really have people who are more interested in listening to certain things because of what's happening around with, you know, holidays and nostalgia. And um, it's a great time to tie in history with what's happening culturally. So um, to, when we look at the agenda, the first thing we have listed here is, um, just a brief, brief look at social media this past month. Uh, Gaston had a great idea to focus on Seaboard Station. And we actually teamed up with Ian, who put together a bunch of research for us. It really showed what we can do when we team up with the other committees. Um, because Ian pulled together research and archival photos. Um, and then Gaston and I actually took a field trip. We invited other people. No one was able to make it, but it would be good, I think, to do field trips every so often to kind of go visit a historic site, walk around. Because in doing that, we were able to collect modern photos and really get a closer sense of the history of Seaboard Station, what used to be there compared with what's remaining today. And then we were able to funnel that into our outreach efforts, right? So our social media really did very well this month because of that. Uh, people were fascinated with the history of Seaboard Station. Uh, and then I found a couple of groups on Facebook that are rail fans. They really love the history of railroads. Um, so it just kind of was a perfect match to uh, reach out to some specific communities that really love that specific history. Um, so just very briefly, um, we reached about 20,000 people this month on Facebook. Uh, so it was a very, that's a big for September. Yeah, for October and December, I might expect those numbers, but September, that's pretty big. It was all because of Seaboard Station. Uh, we gained 38 new followers, uh, which is always good. Um, our most popular post uh, reached 13,000 people with 350 reactions, including 40 likes, 26 comments, and 650 clicks. Um, so it was a very highly engaging post. Let me see if I can actually see which, which post that was. I know it related to Seaboard Station, but let me see. Hold on, it'll come right up. Okay, so it was a picture of um, Seaboard Station, but also the roundhouse that, or the, the turntable that used to be part of the roundhouse. People were really fascinated in that. And we talked about the history of the station and the roundhouse and that part of Raleigh, um, the history with, with, you know, relating to the roundhouses in Raleigh and how they relate to Seaboard. We also did some like before and after photos of Seaboard, you know, back in the day when it was first built compared with what that structure looks like today. And Gaston knew a lot. He was able to point out all these, like, like there was a big chunk of concrete in the middle of the dining area. And he was like, oh, that was the place where the trains would stop if they were like a runaway train. So um, some of those pieces are still there today, um, if you know what you're looking for. So uh, very good month. Um, we also had our second top post uh, reached about 2,500 with 49 reactions, 28 likes, and 14 shares. And then our third uh, had only 1,800 reach, but it had 23 comments. So on engagement, it did better, but on reach, it, it didn't do as well. Uh, but engagement is also I mean, a, a very important measure. I just tend to measure based on reach, but um, that's not really a true measurement. You gotta look at all of it. Instagram did really well this month too. Um, we had some, some people were going on there on Instagram. I'm not sure who was doing it. Um, someone who has that, probably Gaston. Uh, <laughs> um, but I saw that our Instagram had a few posts on it and our Instagram has grown to 250 followers. 
um, which is great. I'd love to see it grow even more. I think there's a ton of potential there, but considering where we were with Instagram, uh, I won't, I won't, uh, you know, look down on 250. That's pretty solid. Uh, and we're getting a really good um, relationship with the community on Instagram. Uh, we're starting to have uh, followers and we're following with other preservation groups and history loving groups and, um, you know, like Ra Raleigh based groups. Um, so we're kind of building some nice digital relationships that we could maybe team up with sometime in the future if we wanted to for future events and things like that. So um, our top post on Instagram got 30 likes and it had two comments. And then our second had 24 likes and three comments. And there were several other posts, but I wanted to just talk about the top ones. So it was definitely a good month on social. And I think that it goes to show, you know, again, Gaston and I had briefly talked about, you know, maybe even once a quarter doing, an, and, and I know COVID makes things tricky, um, but doing some kind of outing um, with the team, you know, and, and we could and it help with, you know, bringing us together as people, especially when we can't see each other very much anymore. Um, you know, even if it was walking around Dick's Park outdoors wearing masks, um, and if not during the pandemic, especially when the pandemic's over, um, having maybe a quarterly field trip, getting together and seeing a historic site in Raleigh um, could really help with our own internal bonding, but also, um, you know, giving us some more stuff to talk about on social media because we're being hands-on. I would just um, say- Yeah, I, oh, mm -hmm. I would like to say on, on that note, um, yeah, I totally agree. I think outings would be, would be good as well. I know you said that for this one, you had invited some other folks. I maybe I was invited and missed it, but I would be interested. It was in during the included. meeting. I think we said, let's do this. And then we were like, hey, you guys want to come along? And then it was just anyone who stated that they were interested, but no one did. <laughs> so we just oh, went. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I just want to say that if it's going to be more than two of you from the committee, mm -hmm. I need to know and it needs to be noticed. Oh, okay. You're doing it. That makes sense. Well, maybe it's good that it was just two of us then this last time because we didn't know to do that. Um, but that's good. Thank you, Tanya. But yeah, I think we should. Um, and if you guys feel comfortable getting together during the pandemic, maybe something outside with masks, we could talk about something in the next couple of months um, or maybe something to start off the year. And then if not, we can talk about after the pandemic. But, uh, you know. Okay, just to Quick uh -huh. idea. You can get Greg Hatem to give us the get us the keys to the waterworks. Oh, I know. That would be the best. <laughs> okay, just to be clear, he doesn't own the waterworks. He owns E. B. Bain. They're two separate buildings. The waterworks building is still owned by the city. Mm. Okay. Well, he knows the Bain place. Is that where they put the? Yeah, he owns. He, yeah, he owns the E. B. Bain water treatment plant. Yeah, that's the big, cool looking one. You, you know, that's the one you're talking about. Though I actually have been talking with the city about giving me a tour of the uh, the waterworks. Um, so that that might be something too. Um, but anyway, that's it for social. And I know we have our next thing on the agenda is the uh, LGBTQIA plus study. Um, so um, is there someone who is wanting to speak on that specifically? I see. I, I can. Um, so on the 14th, and I think a link to the um, event, uh, the calendar item is was in the agenda email, but that has been scheduled for the 14th at seven o'clock is the first community meeting on the project um, where we are introducing it um, and seeking information and like what we're gonna be looking for. Our, our consultant, um, Free Harris will be there to answer questions and we'll be making, you know, connections with, um, uh, hopefully with some, some people that will ultimately be, uh, interviewed from a community awareness standpoint. Um, you know, certainly, you know, please share to the RHDC, all the social media channels and do, um, uh, hashtag or connect or whatever. I played dumb here with um, so so Raleigh Pride, the folks at Raleigh Pride 
um, they've worked with us, you know, gave us some guidance on some language and that kind of thing. Um, but we have also spoken with the LGBT Center and um, SAGE, which is an organization for the uh, LGBTQ elders. It's a national organization and there's a, a local chapter. Um, they are sharing the event with their uh, with their network as well, um, because this is a project that is not geographically based. We, you know, it's going to be word of mouth to to figure out who, you know, to talk to. I've gathered all of the information and sent it to free um, stuff you've already sent us in the past. Um, but um, it's going to be a Zoom meeting seven o'clock a week from Thursday. Can I ask when it comes to promoting this on social media? Um, so when when we ask people to join, are they joining and just kind of watching somebody else present something? Or no, it's going to be interactive. It's okay. going to be interactive, and they and they can they can there will be a, a brief presentation, but it's also intended to be uh, conversational. And of course, okay. with, of course, with Zoom, they can choose whether or not they want to have their camera on. It's, you know. Um, their choice, but it is interactive. So that I want to make yes. sure. I'm yes. Um, Tanya, what I'll do if it's okay, I'll write up a um, a sample post for this and maybe send it to you. I want to make Please sure. Do. That, yeah, I want to make sure I fully understand what the event is and what we're inviting people to do, and then use the proper language. So I'll send this to you before putting it up. Yeah, and you can also, I will put in the chat. Well, let me check and see the calendar see if the calendar invite. I had to go in and realize the. The calendar invitation didn't have a link to the project page. And it still doesn't, it'll take a bit. Good. There's a project page mm -hmm. on the city's website too, which talks about the project generally. Chat here. Um, so there's, I, I put in a, a request to update the calendar invitation to include a link to the, um, project page as well. Um, but it's not live yet. So you can also, but if, but if they, if, but if you send them to the project page, mm -hmm. the, the, in, the, um, events on there as well. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to write that up pretty soon and make sure that you get to look at that. Gaston. Do you, do you, does anybody know how to put this on? It might be worth putting, figuring out a way to put that graphic that invites on or in the information on Instagram while we got our new followers or not. I don't know. I'm not sure how to put that much content. I, if it was a link to something, I could put it on there, but I don't well, know. If anybody know how to do that? Let me know how to do it. So maybe you can teach me. I don't know. What What kind of graphic are you talking about? Well, I, she just sent me the meeting notice. It's under the hyperlink on the agenda. Mm. It brings up a it brings up a rather bold graphic. Oh, it's on okay. the Raleigh the Raleigh calendar. Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't seen that yet because I, I my email is on my phone, which I'm talking on. So, um, if there's a graphic, we should be able to just copy and paste it. Like, cop basically, you should be able to just download it to your phone and then upload it to Instagram like a normal graphic. That's how I would think it would work. Um, you could just like download it to your phone and then just put it up on Instagram, just like a normal picture. I believe that's how it would work, but I would need to see it to make sure that that's what the graphic is. If it's like a JPEG or something. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, that's a good idea. I think a graphic would be more helpful for on Instagram. And I could use it for Facebook too. All right. Well, is there yep. anything left to be said about that? Nope. All right. So historic properties mailer, something we've been, you know, talking about for a little while now. Um, and I know we had a little flub where, um, you know, the pandemic seemed to go away and then it came back and uh, <laughs> we kind of had a, a month there where we just sort of, you know, but, um, Looks so like it's being it's being designed now. Uh, Aaron put in a request to communications before she left on vacation. The goal is to get it out um, so that it hits 
people's mailboxes um, before um, Veterans Day. So it'll go out at the end of this month, early November. Wow. Okay. Is there anything we need? No, there'll, there'll be two. There'll be one that'll go to our seven general historic overlay districts. And then there will be one that will go to Glenwood, Brooklyn, because it's a little bit different. We might end up doing that one at, and so, well, we might do both instead of a postcard, it being, you know, in an envelope with a, a mailer, but um, um, we're, we've, we've got our communications team working on that one. So awesome. we just will let you know. Um, and if it, depending, well, no, it's already October. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry to say, if it's, you have it before the next meeting, I'll show it to you, but um, it should, it should be in the mail before the next meeting. Would y'all mind refreshing me on the purpose of this mail? Or is this just to remind people their obligations as part of historic yeah. district? Okay. Yeah. Is that the only way we have to reach people for sure is to, well, nothing is for sure, but greatest, uh, Ability to, to um, reach people in the historic districts is actual mailers to their to their property. So it's just a hey, did you know? Okay, there won't be a, there won't be a lot of text. It'll be mostly bulleted and sending them to the city's website. Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear and let us know if you need anything from us on that. But that sounds great. Um, Civil rights marker application, FYI. This, this was, yeah, so this was just an FYI. So Mary Ruffin Hanbury, who is a um, former commissioner, she's also a historic preservation consultant. She's done some work for us. She's done some work for St. Ong. She's done a bunch of things, but she and I can't remember who put together a, um, a request to have a civil rights marker put up at um, in Cameron Village slash the village Dennis district. The original Holtz house was by by the um, by the K and W site to mm -hmm. the um, civil rights marker association, and the question I had for you was if y'all wanted to be involved. If it gets approved and there's some sort of celebratory event, would you like to participate in that? This, this, this group, as I understand it, it's like a blog club, whatever you want to call it. Once you're listed on this and they put up some kind of sign up, people who go on historic history tours of different cities will be alerted to where this is. Is that right? Sure. I think that's it. I mean, I think it's like a, it's like a, a, it's a listing of a historic site in the city. So if you came to Raleigh and you were on their list, you would see this site. Yeah, that makes sense. That's cool. I mean, my thought is that, yeah, it'd be great for us to be involved and aligned with that initiative. Yeah, I have no idea what the time frame is um, on that. Do we know it, what exactly are they marking? Like, is it? Okay, there it we go. Hold on, I found it. Um, it is. Oh, so so she's working with the friends of Oberlin Village, to. Um, it's actually through the. It's actually through the state. Um, it's the North Carolina Civil Rights Trail, and um, it would be, the exact location. I'm not sure, but it is. Um, it would be uh, marking the event that happened February 12th, 1960, when 41 students were arrested for trespassing in the shopping center, formerly known, to, known as Cameron Village. There were arrests, a sit-in, and um, they were convicted, won their case on appeal. And so they, they have submitted that. So it will be a state marker that goes up. Um, it's, a, it's a state of North Carolina program. And um, I, I will let her know that y'all are interested. And as it moves forward, I think this also ties in very nicely with the grant that was just received on African American history because one of the topics uh, specifically called out in the grant application is um, civil rights era um, properties as well. So 
be the, the connection. So I will let her know to make sure to keep me informed, um, especially assuming that they get the thumbs up for a marker. Yeah, and, and yeah, please let us know, like, especially if they have like some sort of digital property where we could connect with them or maybe share, like if they have an event and we could help them share and promote the event, kind of anything like that. But I, yeah, I think if we were there, that'd be great to support it, um, to, to show our official support, not to mention to just be kind of out in the community doing things like that. Um, and then also we could, you know, take pictures of the event, share them on our social and, you know, kind of help help promote it. I'm I'm with Katie. I, I think it's a great idea. I just want to make sure that everyone else on board too. Good. Yes. I figured you would be, but I need to ask. Sure, sure. And Tanya, yeah. did you say Friends of Oberlin Village? Are they like the coordinating party for this and it's part of a different organization? Um, or I'm just curious. Just Mary Ruffin in her email, she said she's working with the Friends of Oberlin and Friends of Oberlin is the one that's applying for the marker. Oh, okay. Got it. Well, that's cool. I mean, that's interesting history. I've never heard of that. Yeah, no, me neither. But I, I love Friends of Oberlin. I think it'd be great to <laughs> help them out in any way. Um, well, great. Yeah, just, just, I guess, as soon as you know more, like, what date, you know, would, especially yeah. if it's coming up soon, you know, I mean, if it's, if it's next it's year. It's not coming up. It's not coming up soon. I... My guess is it has to go to a committee and the committee will have to look at it and get approved and then the sign has to get ordered and gotcha. et cetera, so. Okay. So some time. But uh okay. yeah, that sounds great. Super. Did someone talk and I just didn't hear it? Okay, I thought I heard Travis for some reason. Um I'm just laughing because nope, I saw I'm a dog here. come in <laughs> behind Gaston. <laughs> It's a small oh, dog. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, let me see. I didn't see that. Oh, hey, puppy. Oh, oh hi. <laughs> um, cute. Um, all right. So, Arch's demo. Real quick before we get into that, because I, I think that'll, I'm assuming that'll take a good amount of time, Tanya. Yeah. No. No. Um, just real quick for October, because I know for September we did Seaboard Station. For October, I'm going to need to know what to do on social media. I was thinking haunted history, like, you know, historic places with a urban legend around them, but because that tends to be popular, but I'd love to know if you guys have any thoughts or specific places you think I should focus on anything like that. And if you don't have any off the top of your head, you can email them in. I just don't want to take over and just do whatever I want. I'd like to hear if anybody had thoughts. Oh, Tanya is muted. Oh, I very gonna... specifically, I very specifically clicked mute and then started talking. <laughs> it's it's not on theme, but um, you we just today city council adopted the ordinance designating the Thompson, Jones, Anderson, Allen House a Raleigh Historic Landmark. So, um, posting something about that would be great. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be on theme. If it's something just kind of relevant that just happened, that's good too. Perfect. Thank you. I think I heard from Travis, but then he disappeared. Yeah, well, I, I muted myself. Um, we had talked a few times about the Heck Andrews house and the stuff that the Realty Association was doing with it. I don't know if we ever managed to make contact with any of them over there, but would that be a property we'd be interested in highlighting for, would, if not please. October, another month? I would love to highlight the Heck Andrews house. Yes, um, I have had, in particular, a lot of trouble getting in touch with them. Um, I'm not sure why. I've even before this, I've been reaching out to them for my segment, and I can't seem to get up with them. So, I don't know if they're just really busy, or if maybe the number we have isn't accurate anymore. I'm not sure. So, do, and does anybody have any sort of connections with them? Oh. Okay. I know it, it sounds like we already we tapped Ian last month for stuff on Seaboard, but I did see old Raleigh posted either today or yesterday a fun post about the Heck Andrews house with a great narrative that I presume Ian wrote. Probably. <laughs> the proprietor of old Raleigh, but um, so he could Maybe be a good resource. But I, I think I read in the comments that he took most of the information from a couple of online articles and stuff. I don't know if there was like an indication that he was in touch with anyone. Well, I know, I know a lot of the history. I mean, 
we we don't have to, I mean there's a lot of great old photos and a lot of great new photos uh, I've been in the house and I've I've actually done posts about the heck Andrews on RHDC showing pictures of inside the house from when I went in there several years ago before it was being renovated um and those are always very popular so I mean we can do these posts anyway um but it would be cool if we could you know team up with them in some way because it is a historic site so um i guess we could say regardless we can do something on them i wouldn't do it for october because i know they're sensitive about their status as an urban legend and they don't want to have people reminded about that um so maybe we could make them like a, a november type thing um and see if we can reach out to them before then and if not we can still post about them and we could even go visit them and stand outside and look at it you know if you guys wanted to do something like that. Um, so I think that's a great idea. Why don't we shoot for November for, for Heck Andrews? And I think that would be a great topic. Yeah, okay. I think that's a great plan. Okay, I'll put that in for for, uh, for November. And then we can even ask Ian again and he'll have had a little bit more time to recharge before we ask more of him. <laughs> Perfect, okay. On that note then, uh, Tanya, Arches. Okay, so I'm not, sure what anybody knows about it. I, I feel like we've been talking about this for several years, but as a as a reminder, um, um, something that staff has been working on and now there is a um, city of Raleigh strategic plan initiative related to it. Um, Arches is a um, is a, you know, online. Well, ge yeah, online geographic inf information system open source software created by the Getty Institute and the World Monument Fund back in 2016. Um, it is the, um, it was developed specifically with heritage uh, resources in mind so that there's more vocabulary already built in. Search functions allows for some flexibility, um, such as if, you know, you know, you're looking for things built in the 1920s, you can search 1920s and you don't have to have an exact date. Um, and so for a demo, so I'm, we did a demo for research committee last month and um, I wanted to share it with y'all. At some point, we will need to coordinate on how we want to, you know, um, connect with, con you know, connect to what the other, um, uh, web interfaces we have are. This will be multi-departmental. It won't just be ours. It'll also be parks, recreation, and cultural resources, and um, likely other departments as well. But let me click, hold on, let me get it back up. So what I'm gonna show you, since they don't have the cute little two minute video anymore, is a um, an active site that um, is using it. Um, and this is the Armed Forces Retirement Home um, in, in DC. And so, you know, they've got their basic website and then you click start exploring now. Yes, so it tells you, does not show certain things. So, this is, you know, small. It is, it, it is one historic district um, within DC. Um, but you click, I think I zoomed in too far. It did not like me. Is the information, there we go. Well, there are trees and there's a written description. Um, you can, you know, click view report. They don't have photo. Well, they've got a map. They don't seem to have photos on this one, but there's the opportunity for us to put whatever we want. Um, description of it. We can add photographs. Um, let's see. Yes, I understand. We have the possibility to have layers. So, these turn on. 
computer being slow. Oh, maybe I have to click it and then turn it off. Using the browser. There we go. <laughs> um, there are various overlays. So, like, they've got it divided up into character areas. There are base maps and one with the historic map show. Mm -hmm. And no photos. All right, I will go back. Um, I'm going to go to this search. So it also has a way of making connections. So I'm going to, well, they've broken it up where you can click a button and do search, do searches on architectural style, current status, all of all of that maybe I'll click actually. So um, we will be able to choose things. I'm gonna go. Oh, I don't want to select one. I don't know what they have. So I'm just gonna go. Pretty sure there's a culvert. There we go. They've got a culvert. Um, so there's the option. So I looked up culverts. They have five culverts. And there's this thing called related resources. So in this case, you've got this culvert on Marshall Drive is related to the central grounds. And then I can click the central grounds. Then, oh, here are all the things related to the central grounds. So I want to go look at the quarters and how I one and then this quarters is related to this person, Edward Clark. Whoops, and Edward Clark is related to things. So you could either A, go down a rabbit hole, which is where I'm going, because now I'm in a gazebo. I got there from a culvert. But also, for example, say, looked up the, um, the Fisher's um, Bakery and learned that it is a woman-related resource, and you wanted to learn what other women related resources there are here in Raleigh. So you would click that and then you would find out what other women related resources there are out there. Um, we will have the ability to um, customize what we're looking at. I am going to go show you something super fancy future pie in the sky, but to give you an idea. So we'll start off with, it'll, we'll get all of our um, historic inventory information um, collated into one place that is publicly accessible and easily viewable. Um, but in the future, there's the possibility to do fun things with the background research. And, you know, the Getty has a huge endowment. Um, and so, but this is really a fun thing that they did where they use the information, use the database from Arches to create this, you know, drive along um, this street. So, um, so you can look and do a comparison from 1980 to 1995. Um, you can flip it, look at different things, apparently. Oh, you can choose your ride. I want to be in a VW van. Anyway, so, um, okay, I don't want to share anymore. Where are we? Keep sharing the room. Stop sharing. So that was an example of sort of the basic all the way to the super fancy and um, we're very early. Well, I mean, it's taken a while, but we are in the process of meeting with the city's IT folks to um, look into issuing a 
RFP or Q um, for someone to uh, get started um, on. So just real quick, yeah, I yes. was I, not to interrupt you. I was looking at the project website for this Arches software, yes. Arches project that where it's pretty impressive stuff. It is. And the, yes. the back end looks like it's running on Python, Django, Elasticsearch. So the like the best um, Python Django development house is actually in Durham and it's called Cactus Group. So that would be one I'd, I, if you're going to put an RFP out, I would make sure it at least touches their inbox also, because I know they've done some nonprofit stuff too. Okay, I wrote that down. So um, it is an open source software, so we won't have any licensing fees. What we would be hiring the consultant to do is to, you know, implement the current version of Arches, which I think is 5.1 right now work with our IT staff to make sure that it can talk to the city's GIS if that's part of what we're going to do um, and you know help us set up whatever customizations we want because um, there will be at, at a minimum it will be you know planning and development with you know RHDC and, and the city's your architectural inventory. This will include things that are designated. This will include things that are on the potential landmarks list. This will just include anything we happen to know is old and there's something going on there um, or there's something old and we don't know what's going on there. Um, but it will um, also include information on the city owned sites and uh, potentially um, be a way to um, it, well, it's not a collections management program, but it may be a way to showcase some of the city's collections, such as, you know, if they have, so for example, say the Pope House, the Pope House is on the website, there could be some images of some of the artifacts related to the Pope House on there. Um, but all of this is yet to be worked out. It also has the possibility, if we decide to go this route in the future, to have some level of crowdsourcing, whether it is just simply commissioners who are out there gathering data for us, such as the research committee um, periodically will do um, go and check up on the historic landmarks that we haven't seen a certificate of appropriateness from in some time to make sure that they're still standing and you know there haven't been any inappropriate changes. So they would be able to in the field make changes that would then get uploaded into the um, into the database that way too. So mostly at this point, I just want you to know that this is coming. Um, this right now we are planning that it would be something that we link to from the you know, city of Raleigh's webpage, whoever's using it, certainly from the RHPC page. Um, And we will, um, the folks from the communications team will also be part of the conversation just because um, it would be nice for there to, for it to be packaged nicely. That makes any sense. So anyway, this was just FYI, we will keep you up to date um, and your your input at some point will be needed, but it's it's largely a um, a multi departmental staff led program. Cool. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for explaining it. I can see why um you know people have been pretty excited about it. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, right now what we have is we have an access database that I made in 2008. Couldn't make again if I tried, and it's like everything else. It, it, but it's very, it's not something people can find, and we really, you know, don't need to be. I mean, there's nothing we have that's hidden information, but we also don't have things collated. Collated is not the right word. Um, together in the same place. 
that would be useful. Yeah, definitely. I think this is great. I think this is something people would like a lot too, especially with the, I don't know, I feel like the, the ancestry.com effect or whatever. People are really into that type of database stuff where they can just search at their leisure. So yeah, this is great. I'm all about it. Well, cool. Um, thank you. And we have just about 10 minutes left. Um, so I guess we can jump into talking about the 60th anniversary. Um, and remind me, what month is that? Or are we just kind of celebrating the whole year? Or is it more of like a, a month that we're doing that on? Well, December, so December 18th, 1961 is when y'all incorporated, I think. I may have the, the wrong exact, but it's definitely December. So I'm typing the, the date down so I don't forget. Yeah. Okay. So I guess are we aiming then? It sounds like we're aiming to do something for December. Or, um, which or is before. So technically, technically this December is the 60th. I don't know that that's time. I would, I think at this point, particularly given the COVID and we weren't sure that, you know, doing a post and a yay on the actual date, but maybe the first couple of months or plan for something in spring um, so that it is, you know, celebrated during the 60th year. I, I agree with that. I, I was going to say December, I think, would be tricky, um, just partially yeah. because of COVID, but partially because it's holidays. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to get them to care about anything that's not Christmas. So, um, okay, I agree with that. We could aim for, like, maybe springtime, um, and maybe things will have opened up a little bit by then. Well, I think that even... Well, I, I'm ever the optimist. Assuming that something, you know, another horrible variant doesn't come through, I think having in the spring an outdoor something is a reasonable, mm -hmm. you know, direction to head in. Okay, I, I I agree with that, and we can sort of tentatively start to plan that. Maybe have like a a small backup plan in case that. Sure. fall through um so that we still have something to, to celebrate um but i agree i think a, an outdoor something would be great like a tour you know um even even right now groups are doing like outdoor like tours with masks and things like that so we maybe could do some sort of tour that we create specifically for our 60th anniversary and uh try to come up with like a walking tour maybe try the bike tour again um so uh, yeah, so I agree with that. And then it looks like uh, we have digital puzzles listed here. Is that uh, the, was that a suggestion somebody had? I'm just I, asking because I hadn't. Yeah, well, I think Aaron Aaron had thought of it, and then I happened to see it. I was clicking through. I don't know if I was looking at the Raleigh Register or if I just oh, happened to be on the Historic Resources and Museums Program site. For some other reason, and oh, they're cool. Saw that they have that there are some Mordecai um, puzzles on there, so that seemed like it might be a fun, it is um, easy project. Well, plus apparently, like they're already on here. You can click and look at them if you haven't yes. yet. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and they like time how long it takes you to do it, which I think is kind of cool. And they're really nice. Like it's, I was thinking digital puzzle when I saw that. I was like, mm, I don't know. But actually looking at it, it's pretty cool. I want to do it now, you know. Um, that's fun. And we could even maybe come up with like, you know, like a little, you know, game out of it. Like win a prize if you do it in a certain time or something. If, if we wanted to, uh, to encourage more engagement on it. But that's that's fun. That's a nice, easy thing. And looks like some of it's already the work's already done for us um so that's cool if you guys haven't had a chance to click on the link check it out it's it's pretty cool um and then yes i do think we should have another 
collector card um, release. You know, if I, I was thinking it might be good to do one at a time, maybe two at a time. Four was a lot just in terms of, I almost think it would be better. I mean, for the first launch, I think it was fine to do four different spots, mm -hmm. try and get the word out and make it a bigger thing. But in a sense, we could do one place and then really focus on making sure that they have enough cards and that they have enough, you know, goodies and that we're working closely with them to help them promote it. Um, Cause I know some of the issues we ran into, and again, it was very successful. Um, but if, if I could change things, what I would say is getting the organizations we work with to promote a little bit more and I think that's because we didn't have as much time to work with them directly and, you know, like encourage them to put things on their social media and do a little bit more of that outreach on their end. Um, so maybe we could try one or two cards at a time and, um, you know, just release them slowly that way. Not to mention the stuffing 400 bags was a lot to do. So, mm -hmm. um, so maybe we could try something like that. Um, and then it looks like, yeah, app, new Raleigh historic app thing tours. Do we have some new tours? No, we don't. That was, so we typically do one or two new tours a year. So mm -hmm. we would need to know a theme and then um, I would get the, the text written and put up there. So we haven't done one in a while. So you would need to, Go on there, see what, you know, remind yourself what the landmarks are, what tours we already have and either pick a location or pick a theme. We've done, you know, restaurant related, the foodie one, we've done education related, we've got African American. We can do a tour based on the, based on the dates. Can't remember what else is on there. There's the bicycle tour is on there. So. Okay. So, yeah. So basically so come up with some kind of theme and. You, yes. Same, which which landmarks are going to be a part of it, and then um, we use um, a consultant. She writes. She'll she'll write it up. So and she also writes the blurbs, and that way everything is in the same editorial voice. Um, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely cool. And then uh, social media series, uh, historic district FAQs. Yeah. Um, is that is that are you saying that that's something you would like to have done so that? at the bottom of that is just and we're going to start doing this for all the committees is here's what we're going to talk about and by the, by the way there are all these other things that we've talked about too don't forget they it exist that makes so that, sense that's what that bottom part is um, okay to help so you I, prioritize what you're going to talk about each time mm-hmm mm -hmm. So I would say definitely um, the 60th anniversary should become something that becomes our focus in the next few upcoming meetings. Okay. Um, start planning for that. And again, if we're aiming for like maybe March or April when it's warm enough to do something outdoors, um, you know, we have some time to, to really start thinking about it. So maybe for the next meeting, we can start talking about what kind of event we would like to do just to kind of get an, an idea on the books, right? What what right. we'd like to do and, and maybe that can be our primary focus next meeting. Yeah, because once you decide what you want to do, then you'll want to start about where it's going to be mm -hmm. and whether or not we need to, you know, to contact people to get permission or whatever the case may be. So there you go, um, guys, something we can think about for next time, have some ideas in our heads to bring to the table. And we will get back with you on next steps also on the website um, as well. I think Erin let Katie know that that was your 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 vote. Um, but honestly, I can't remember. I feel like she did after after the last meeting, but we need to um, circle back with her to find out what our next steps are going to be. I know one of the things will be to you know, look at that, um, the audit or look at the website and decide um, what's gonna get moved over, what's prioritized if we phase it 
and I'll need, we will find out from them the best way to what, what, what I envision, and I'm not sure if this is the way it's going to be, is that we have another meeting with uh, Katie and probably Aaron, um, the web guy, um, to talk about, to help you walk through how you want the new pages structured, if that makes any sense. So, that is not forgotten. Enjoy Perfect. Yeah, and, and that's something we will add to our future agendas as well to kind of to walk through that stuff too. Um, but that sounds good. Is there anything else that anybody else wanted to bring up while we're here? We're closing in our two minute mark. Nothing for me. Okay. How do you All right. you summarize the card thing re, a, a minute ago? What what was your final? What's your quick summary on the card thing, the history card thing? Um, Focus on so one, not so much a big a task. I'm sorry, say it again. What, broke was, up. what was your recap on redoing the card thing, the history card, the history baseball card? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we were just talking about going ahead and releasing some for the 60th anniversary uh, okay. event. Yeah. And and we we could we could even we could reprint some of the older ones to have on hand to give to people if we have an event, um, and then we could also whether that month or maybe the month before. Um, ultimately, with the history cards, I think it would be cool to maybe once a quarter release like one card, right? Something that we're regularly doing, teaming up with a local business in a historic district or building. Um, and doing this as like kind of, a, again, once a quarter, one card, right? So it's not too much work on our plates, but it's something we can do to regularly be in the public eye and be doing outreach and communicating with the public and educating people in a fun way. Um, so ultimately, I, I would love to see that happen every three months, right? Um, so we can definitely talk about if we want to try and do one before then, um maybe like for january i think it's going to be tough to do it during the holidays that's my sense um is that it's it's hard to get again it's hard to get people to you know want to uh, from from a staff management and you know not having you know aaron pilk herself again i wanted to, to keep being able to do these because she enjoyed it and i think you you liked them I perhaps would maybe focus, you know, plan on spring for the 60th, but use part of this days to come up with a schedule. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it quarterly, go ahead and nail out what, what are the cards you're going to do in 2022? Figure it out, put it on the calendar. We'll make it happen. That's a great idea. Yeah. And that's a good point. Cause we do have to think about not overworking any of the staff with the extra stuff that we want to do. So let's do that. Let's plan for um, the next release kind of will be part of that, you know, event. Uh, that way it rolls into what we're doing anyway. But in the meantime, we will decide on the four different places we want to work with in 2022 so that we all have that planned ahead of time. And then staff will just, you know, they'll already know what they're going to be needing to do and it'll be easier for them to roll it out. I think that's a good plan. Thank you, Tanya. All right. Well, uh, 502, I think we're good. So, uh, thanks everybody. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye yeah. everyone. Have a great October. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.